You're listening to the Super League Pod, coming up on episode 90 of your favourite Rugby League podcast. We've got all your feedback and shout-outs, news from around the world of Rugby League. We'll be looking back over round three of Super League and previewing round four. I will bring you all your views on your podcast, the Super League Pod. Okay, welcome along, Mark. Episode ninety, number one hundred is is getting nearer and nearer. Yeah, isn't it? You seem really excited for number one hundred. Um, it's well, it's it's a big landmark. Milestone. It's a yeah. big landmark. It's yeah. a big landmark. I figured you'd get bored of doing it by sort of fifty, or at least bored of me, and then ah. then have been someone else in. <laughs> I don't think that's my decision to make. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's a joint venture. It's got a committee, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah. How's your week been generally? You've been a bit, been a bit poorly, haven't you, lad? Just. Just cold, but it's nothing that scuppered the weekend in terms of doing anything other than sitting in and watching rugby league. So it's not really that bad a time. Every silver, uh, line, every cloud is a silver lining. Though. I probably would have had a day off work if it wasn't for um, going to the game on Thursday. Know, you know, you, you get can't. shit off people when you oh, do yeah. something, and then yeah, you're yeah. off the next day. So That's it. Couldn't be asked for that bullshit. Well, that was how I felt after the World Club series. Yeah. I was I was ill for that, but it was Friday and Monday, and there was there's just no way you can. Like, because I told everyone at work what a big weekend I'd lined up. There was just no way I could phone in ill. No. So I had to power through. But, uh, okay, yeah. How about you? Good week? Yeah, steady away. Steady away, really. Nothing uh, nothing too exciting. Just just normal working week and bits of rugby league, really. Yeah. So, yeah, been enjoyable. Been good. Um, but we've had people getting in touch with us throughout the week, as we normally do. So who's been uh, who's been reaching out to us this week, Mark? Well, um uh, a new one on us, uh, Dominic Crossland, he emailed us, he said, uh, I'm fairly new to the podcast, but time my discovery perfectly to coincide with the first episode of the new season, in brackets, the three-hour marathon pre-season review. You're welcome. Um, he said, having said that, I'm fairly new to RL as well. The first game I went to was the World Cup final in 2013, mm. and since then I've watched pretty much every game I can get to or see on TV. Really enjoying the podcast, keep up the good work. Well, that's good. That's good that a man who is <clears throat> unsullied by... You know, previous rugby league experience. <laughs> Steve, yeah. I think we're doing a good job. Thank you, Dom. Let us know a bit more about yourself. As well, well though, Dom's, Dom. uh, he did let us know a bit more. Did he? Yeah. So it's, he. Well, that's not in my rundown, so. He's a Salford fan. Excellent. He had to de- he's, he's from the Greater Manchester area. Okay. He had to decide who he was going to support. And uh, living in Bolton at the moment, he could have gone Wigan or Leeway, but he went with Salford because he had ties there from, I think, he lived there for a couple of years when he was a student and good that, that sort of thing. And, it's not uh, a bad time to be cool he, fan, really. He's um, a bit of a DJ as well in his in his spare time. Another one. Is that right? Yeah, he's into uh, drum and bass. Fantastic sort of stuff. Quite good. Quite good stuff. You'd probably yeah. like it. Uh, you can. I think his name's uh, Dom Release or something. If you look on SoundCloud. Oh, I think I've. Oh, did he offer? He kindly offered to put some interlude music together for us, didn't he? Yeah, or but something. when I listened to his stuff, I thought that that that. That'd really blow the minds away of some of, <laughs> some of the would it, be, would, it, would, it, would it be a bit of a Back to the Future moment? Just like, well, maybe you guys aren't ready for it yet. Yeah, yeah. Your kids are going to love it. That's what I think, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. It was all right, though. Me, me and Emma sat listening to it. We quite enjoyed Good it. Good stuff. Oh, well, I'll definitely check it out then. Speaking of, speaking of music, we've had uh, we've had some uh, some This Week in League royalty make, make contact with us, haven't we? I don't know if we call him royalty, do we? But Tim Tim McIntyre. Well, he, he figures pretty much. heavily on the show, Mark. In a way that you know, a lot of our tweeters can, we consider them royalty. That's different. Yeah. We 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 but are the monarch. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, Tim McIntyre got in touch. She said she's Tim's queen too. She is. Yeah, yeah. but she's based here. Yeah. Um, first time listening to Super League Pod and about 10 minutes in they slag off Genesis lol not a good start this was I didn't foresee this well, Wally Frogmore quite had, the buzz that it did down bit, under uh, yeah obviously Genesis and, and you know and I, I appreciate now looking back that not knowing the difference between Genesis and um, Status Quo Status Quo is perhaps a bit of a faux pas it was pretty flippant <laughs> on your behalf. it was very flippant and glib yeah Particularly since I am the proud owner of a number of Phil Collins albums as well, and quite enjoy his music. 
that's a little bit like when politicians do things and go, hold on. No, no. Are you making this show up now? Because last week you couldn't tell the difference between the two bands. No, I didn't know the difference between the two bands. I never cared for that. But yeah, I've got like. Um, so no. you didn't know Phil Collins was in Genesis? I sort of did, yeah. But I couldn't remember which one it was, whether it was in Genesis or whether it was in Status Quo. But I knew <laughs> that I had like no jacket required and stuff like that when he, from when he left whichever band it was that he was in. There you go. He was the drummer, cool yes. singer. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just yeah okay. I'm sorry if I really upset anyone, but let's just not get a grip. I think I think it's, it's I think you got away with it in the end. I think yeah. it's all right. There you go. You're backtracking. Um. <laughs> I've just researched a few Aussie bands to drop in little references over the rest of the podcast that probably only the lads will get. Silverchair. <laughs> They're Australian. Yeah, wasn't the guy going out with um, Natalie and Brulia? For a while? Going out with Natalie and Brulia doesn't make you Australian. I'm you're not the RFL. <laughs> You're not, quali- you're not qualifying people to play for Great Britain. Fuck it out. I'm pretty sure. He listened to an Atlee and Brulia song. He could play for Australia. I'm pretty That's, sure Silver Chair was. Is that how Sonny Rodrigo is going to get were, it? Were Australia's answer to Nevada. <laughs> I thought Silver Chair were British. No, I was thinking of a band called Parkway Drive that I really like as well, which are a bit more sort of. <laughs> they're from Australia. Or um, what were they called? Um, I'll fly you to the moon and back people. Not in excess, what they call Crowded House? No, no, they were, oh, they were no, no, a no. band, oh, I really them. like them. Yeah, I like Crowded House. No, I know you mean, um, there's two of them, fellas, Darren Hayes and another one. Yeah. What were they called? I don't know, but my, my, oh, my, my, dad, my dad and Angie had it, one of their songs, just the first dance song. That's your Do My Sweden, can you look no, that I up? Can't. Oh my God. I know who you mean. They had a shit name as well, didn't they? Were they? Awful. they were fucking woeful. They were, they were bad. absolutely awful. Yeah, flying to the moon and back. And um, they were like they're popular for like that brief period in the sort of mid to late. Oh god, was it ACDC? No, sort of late... Was that no ACDC? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to yes, get a jump? Massively. So. I'm trying to chat start a fight with someone. Fucking hell! I want to say something about a door, but I just. Oh god, no! I'm getting out the second I hear it. What does it say? I'm sure, we'll, we'll this get is an amazing podcast. Savage Garden. Savage Garden. What a stupid fucking name! Oh my god! Yeah, there <laughs> they you were go. Australian as well, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Well, I'm not entirely sure that after the people of Australia are their music, whether or not they might have been ex- <laughs> excommunicated. Well, fair enough. Wow, there you go. You're listening to this week in Australian pop music. <laughs> Will you start doing the This Week reference for not This Week in League? We're the fucking Super League fan. I know, but Super League... I know you want to be them. I don't know why. Just, Super, you know. League, Super League pop music. There you go. There you go. All right, nice one. So, what are we up to now? Robert Phillips Fox goes uh, 20 minutes without a single bad word. I don't think we made it five this That week, is we? remarkable. <laughs> Alex was very pleased with his mention. Good. In brackets, all shy and smiley. Well, he was, he was a good kid. Yes. But, uh, sorry that he can't listen to this I was going to say, I sincerely hope you haven't, <laughs> you haven't followed this through as presidential, Bob. And uh, we would we would try and not swear again through Lee's reviews, but it's pretty difficult for the for the things we're getting sent in to not include yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of the, the locals are restless, aren't they? The um, are restless. Couple from Tim Griffiths E said that we forgot to mention a certain column in the RLDS fanzine by your listener of the year. Yeah, T- Tim, I hadn't got through to reading it, and Tim's was buried at the back, All right. <laughs> like a little diamond hidden away. But he wrote an article in there about Sean Morris's move from playing for London to not getting a look in at, at Wakefield. Right. Um, so there you go. Interesting in there uh, for anyone who wants to read it. Good stuff. Tim Griffiths as well got mm. in touch and pointed out that it was Maidenhead. Not Maidstone. Okay. In uh, in Berkshire or Berkshire. Whatever. Berkshire. The home counties. It. Yeah. Where Oxford are playing this year. Yes. Um, Chris Macy got in touch. He said... Cracking show as always, gents. Love the mention for the RLDS fanzine and Trods will spoil. <laughs> Remember watching as a kid and also realised the, the bug is still going. No I Thought way. they scrapped it years ago. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Did like Channel 9 produce it? Have I got that from somewhere? The people who own Channel 9? I don't know. I really don't know. I can re- I think I can remember the symbol for like the trans world sponsor, yeah. like the Maybe it's just sort of similar. Game. Maybe that's what you're thinking. But of, you'd but... have like um, Aussie rules on it, and you would. you'd have the NRL highlights. And Kabaddi. And you'd get Kabaddi. You'd get a bit of a Speedway. Yeah. That got me got me into Speedway on a Saturday morning mm. on Channel Four, and uh, yeah, a few other. I don't. Other bits I don't know if like it was that. necessarily an Australian thing, although um, it could very well be. Um, <clears throat> 
and uh, no helmets required. Uh, Gavin Willis, he got in touch. Love the early mention of Trans World Sport on Super League Pod, a window into the Globe's most ob- obscure action pre my addiction to the MLS and MLB on Channel 5. God, he must have been staying up late if he was watching the MLS because they banged their shitty highlights on before they had the star player rule. Yeah. After you'd get the MLB game or the NFL game or the right. ice hockey game. So it'd be at like four o'clock in the morning for half an hour. Jesus. Maybe just, maybe just say... That's when they used to have that weird shootout at the end of games as well. I don't know if they still have that, but What's they that? used to have... You know, like in the in ice hockey, you have the shootout where they come from halfway. Yeah. Well, it was kind of like that. You, the players Fuck off your to, football. Yeah. Right at the like, early MLS days, like 15, 20 years ago. Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sure from, about that. From Unless I've line. made it up in my head. They've not run from halfway line and tried to score. Is that what you say? I think so. I maybe made it up in my head. What's a lot? God, they could scrap that But they used to have that shot. sort of stuff. At, they used to have something like that at the end of every game. At the end of every... Just regardless? No, no. If there was a draw? Yeah. Right, okay, I was going to say. I don't think that... It works like that anymore, though. No, I don't think it does. I'm probably making that up. Alan Walker got in touch. It um, seems like you might be, mate. Said, I think you're both way up. Maybe they could do like the flying V of Mighty Ducks. <laughs> no, they one on one, I think. All right, okay. Alan Walker got in touch. I think you're both way off on the World Club Series as an early season highlight event. It's a pre season warm up trial game for the NRL. They get paid for it too. We're paying them the money that should be using. we should be using for youth development. It's only interesting here because you get to see JT and the likes close up. We won't be coming next year. He's not needed. Their teams will get weaker till they reach our level. We need to shorten our regular season, create an event at the beginning of the season, but it needs big bucks. I think it's sort of saying. I agree with that we need to shorten our regular sending, season. Then. They'll stop sending the second and third best teams open if mm. it keeps going the way it's going yeah or if they do send the better teams over they'll send second strings from those teams maybe Possibly. I think we're just going to rule draw a line under that conversation now unless anyone else has, it, has anything to add because us and Alan clearly disagree on the state yeah. of the event I'm happy with it where it is in the calendar and, and I sort uh, of tend to agree with you on that as well yeah so you know and none of us want a slaughterhouse visit so we, uh, we appreciate your views Alan and uh, okay. we'd, we'd share the rounding that off yeah. to, to balance that out if yeah. anyone else has any views on when the World Club Series should be uh, played get in touch let us know yeah maybe you can come up with something uh, something exciting uh, I just want to add one thing onto the shout outs and give a shout out to our listener Dom Hodgson who became a father um, not long before the World Club Challenge game pretty much during I'm I think pretty much, I'm, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure whether or not he had to miss it to be honest he did miss the game oh, yeah. There you go. his right. mum went in his stead and had a nice slap up there uh, Look at that. Bit meal with his dad that the it arranged, you know. Fantastic. The, the, well uh, congratulations to all the Hodgsons and hopefully Mum and Baby are doing well. I've seen a couple of pictures up on Facebook of them yeah. all together and stuff and she was a little bit early, so Yeah, so in terms, of going, labor, in terms of going to labour, so what are the five weeks things okay? Five weeks early, but the, um, Dom said that they're doing good so uh, congratulations. congratulations yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Right, uh, let's take a look now at news from around the world of rugby league. Okay, so perhaps the biggest piece of news to come out of Rugby League this week, Mark, happened not quite on Tuesday, but relatively relatively soon after, and it was when Hull KR sacked head coach Chris Chester after just three matches into the current campaign. Chester, who's 37, was in charge for 18 months and led the club to last year's Challenge Cup final at Wembley, where they lost by 50 points to Leeds Rhinos. He signed a three-year contract when he was appointed to replace Craig Sandercock in 2014. Assistant coach Willie Poaching has been placed in temporary charge for Friday's home game, or last Friday's home game, against St Helens. Um, so perhaps not a massive surprise. Um, maybe the you know the speed at which it came, but he was under some pressure. We did get some tweets in. Uh, Brian Davies got in touch with us and said, "Wow, uh, what he shows is that the bottom clubs need to up their game. Progress under progress under Chester had been slow at best." And Tim G Radio got in touch and said, "Thought we'd actually give the guy a chance before getting rid. Not sure who I'd want next, but definitely not Brian Noble." Um, what were they expecting the guy to do with limited resources and so many injuries? So before we get to my poll, I just wanted to ask what you thought about the timing of it and whether or not you felt Chris Chester got a fair shake at the start of the season. Well, I mean, it's, it's a short short span of time, isn't it? Yeah. But I think it shows some of the problems at the club that mm. they've had last year yeah. uh, that, that got them into the middle eights. Okay, mm. they had the class in the half-backs to do what they needed to do in those middle eights phase mm. um, without any bother, but they got absolutely butchered in the cup final and 
they weren't exactly impressive in the league. I know they na- only relatively narrowly missed out on the top eight. I think they were, they were what three but... points, but they were they were in the chase until the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, of the regular season but defence was a problem and the pack was a problem yeah. those are two things that haven't really been addressed uh, I don't think I think they've actually got worse possibly, argue, possibly so um, they actually tackled 